Hey everyone, how's it going? Thanks so much for tuning in. Today's video is going to be filled with monumental Chevelle progress. We're going to be getting the body mounted to the frame. My buddy Joe has been hard at work prepping the underside of the car so we can spray bed liner for additional durability and sound insulation. So we're just about ready to get started spraying that and I'll give you just a quick look on everything that has been done to get everything, you know, very pretty, very smooth, very clean. Um, going a little bit fancy here, so it's gonna turn out really, really nice. Then, once the bed liner cures, we'll get the body rolled over into the fabrication area and work on setting it down on the frame. It's gonna be awesome. Before we get started, I'd like to extend a huge thanks to Original Parts Group for all of their support. It really means a lot. I've got some links down in the description box below to all sorts of parts that we've used in the build so far, as well as a link to all of their product catalogs because they offer pretty much anything and everything to restore and modify all sorts of classic GM vehicles. So be sure to support the brands to support the channel. I really appreciate it. At this moment, the entire underside has been prepped, primed, taped, and is ready for bed lining. There's all sorts of different ways to finish the underside of a classic vehicle. Some people, for more show car quality type stuff, they want to go the extra mile and actually bodywork everything and get it ultra smooth and paint everything to match, you know, the outside. But if you're gonna be driving something on a regular basis, going over dirt and all that kind of stuff it just seems like a nightmare to me because you're gonna have to deal with chips and cleaning things and all that stuff one thing that i've always really liked to do is spray some kind of rubberized undercoating or truck bed liner to the underside because it gives you that added level of protection it does offer some extra sound deadening as well and you don't really have to worry about rocks being kicked up and chipping something which if it gets down to bare metal can be a rust spot and so on and so forth so we've got everything ready to go so let's get to it
bed liner just finishes everything off. Now we have a good durable coating underneath here and it all looks like brand new. We've just got to give everything sufficient time to cure at this point. But once it's all dried and ready, we can get the body over into the other side of the shop and start fitting it to the frame. We ended up doing a smooth firewall. So welded up the majority of the factory holes on this side of the firewall and then body worked over it and stuff. So this will all be painted satin black to match the frame and whatnot. And it'll look really, really clean. Joe also body worked this side of the firewall a bit just to smooth out some of the factory defects, if you will. So it'll carry the theme over to this other side, even though we're going to have some stuff bolted up. Even though there's still a bunch of body work that needs to be done on the firewall and other areas of the car, Joe went ahead and taped everything off. So we have a nice clean break between the bed liner and the other areas of the car. That way, when it comes time to do all of the sanding and stuff, we don't have to sand through a bunch of overspray bed liner. So a little bit of precautionary measures here saves a whole lot of time later on. After a little bit more finessing, the firewall is all ready for paint. The paint is still pretty fresh. It's going to dull off some more, but with the reflection, you can see just how smooth all of that ended up being. Man, oh man, this is going to be sweet. While Joe does some thread chasing on the areas where the body bolts are going to mount up, let me show you the kit that we got from Original Parts Group. This is technically for a coupe, but according to the diagram, all of the bushing locations are the exact same. There's a couple of differences on this diagram though. We're not going to be using E right here. That's only for factory big block cars and convertibles. And this area right here, we have the same mounting point on the sedan, but this on a coupe is a solid rubber bushing. We've got a, um, you know, a bolt-on bushing. So we're gonna have to get a bolt-on bushing for this position right here. So now we're gonna lower the body back on the frame, do any little adjustments we need to do, and uh, you know, start getting all of this in place.
we have really, really good fitment. The bushings lined up just as they're supposed to. There's a few small modifications that we have to do, just being that we have some differences between the sedan and the coupe, but they're really not that big, big of a deal at the end of the day. We've gotta get some bolts for the bolt-on bushings in the middle, which, which we just pulled from you know some extra bushings we had sitting around the shop. There's no threaded portion in the body to be able to bolt down the front bushing, so we're gonna have to get some uh, nuts and washers to get that locked down, but that's how it was all held in originally. And then the core support bushings. The holes in the frame are not quite as wide as the bushings, so we're gonna have to bore those out bigger so the bushings can sit down nice and flat. So some hardware, a little bit of drilling, at the end of the day, I think that worked out pretty nice. Well, everyone, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Short and sweet, but lots of progress. I hope you guys enjoyed. To give you a little bit of a snapshot on what needs to be done to the car next, we still have other areas of rust to address, mainly around the cowl area, and we still gotta fix the um, you know areas around the rear window, plus some other little small patches here and there. Not too crazy, but still gonna be a lot of work, so definitely expect some content out of that. That being said, I am going to be turning my attention back to the 89S10 build. I'm trying to get that completely finished and wrapped up, done by the end of May. So we'll keep our fingers crossed that I can you know, stick with that timeline and that nothing super crazy happens. Hopefully we'll be able to dive back into the Chevelle sometime in June to really hit the rest of that metal work hard and then get into the body work and refinishing. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like down below because it really helps the videos a lot. And if you haven't subscribed already, consider doing so because of course, there's always a lot more content where that came from. Once again, a big thanks to Original Parts Group for all of their support. You'll find all of those related links down in the description below, as well as a link to the Chevelle Resto Mod playlist. So if you missed any episodes, you can go back and catch up to what we're doing. So that being said, I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.